quick note, I think Kim has shared this with most of you, but this was the most combined points in CAA history, regular season or overtime game. Um, Coach Wilder will make an opening statement and we'll open it up for questions. Wow, that's the first word that comes to mind. Um, that was incredible. I've, I've never been involved with a, with a game like that. I've been around some high scoring games and productive games, but 1,500 yards of offense and 200 total plays and uh, just the way it the way it ended, but uh, very, very proud of our football team and uh, particularly the way we finished. Um, things did not look good at, at 47-24 uh, in the third quarter. New Hampshire came out, went right down the field and scored, and uh, it didn't look good. And um, then we got a lift when Jaquil Bailey made that uh, sensational catch and run when it looked like he'd been tackled a couple times, and that really seemed to bring our, our sideline back to life. Um, we finally got a couple stops on defense, and then I, I felt like in the fourth quarter, and uh, I say this with all due respect to New Hampshire, but I, I felt like I did um, in some of our games towards the end of last year and, and early this year that um, we just had so much pace going at that point, and, and they couldn't sub enough, and their guys were out there battling, but they were just exhausted. And I kept saying to Brian Scott there, um, their defensive line was trying to get up the field, but they couldn't. Uh, they were trying to stay in coverage, and um, I feel like we just wore them out uh, in the fourth quarter, and I, I think that was the key to the game. So excited with the win, very, very proud of our kids, and uh, I'll take questions. How big of a turn was the turnover down there at the two-yard line? Yeah, that's, that might have, been the, might have been a play of the game because we weren't giving the impression that we had the ability to stop them. Um, and they get the bad snap, and uh, we get the ball, and then we turn around and go, go 98 yards. I, I apologize, Dave. I don't remember what <laughs> what touchdown that was. <laughs> nor, nor, nor do I. Really. You know, <laughs> Did that cut it to 47-38? Where's uh? But then you gave one up right after that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That cut it to 47-38, and then the next play we get caught in a blitz, and the quarterback goes 67, but. I, I don't know. I, I keep trying to, like you just did, Dave, I keep trying to pick plays that I thought might have uh, turned it. But I, I just think when it uh, when we got to the fourth quarter and, uh, and Mayers hit Heineke, or I'm sorry, Heineke hit Mayers for that touchdown. It made it 54 to 46. He hit him for the two. We, we finally got it to a one-score game at 13 minutes. And that, that really pumped a lot of life into our our players, because it didn't appear we'd been in the game until that point uh, at 54-46. I didn't have the sense we were in the game until it got to 54-46. And then there's something you don't see a lot of, guys. We went back-to-back -to -back touchdowns and two-point conversions. It went from 54-38 to 54-54. To and uh, that, I, I think that really gave us that momentum. Were you worried the way that the defense was having such trouble stopping them? Was there a, uh, like a, a differential, a point differential in your head where you said, we can't fall but so far behind to do, just to give the offense enough possessions or snaps or chances to catch up? Yeah, that's uh, boy, <laughs> it's, it's like a cash register in my head right now, Dave. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember at what point, there was a point when I felt like uh, we couldn't stop them, and that's when I called for the onside kick, uh, which you know, it, it didn't work. The kid was, was right there, and Jared hit it, and he recovered it. And um, when I did that, I, the reason I did it is because they got the 15-yard penalty. So we kicked off from the 50. And I knew if they recovered it, they'd be on about the 38. And if I let Jared Brown kick it, he'd kick it out of the end zone, they'd be on the 25. So the, the yardage different wasn't that much. But in my head, I was thinking, we, we can't stop them right now. We, we just don't have an answer. Uh, to stop them, and, and we really didn't get an answer until uh, when we got it to a one-score game, and then uh, we had a couple injuries on defense, and Andre Simmons uh, went in at Nickelback, a transfer from Vandy, and uh, I just felt like when Andre went in, we, we started playing better. Uh, we got a spark. He ends up making the interception at the end of the game uh, when they went back-to-back -back first downs and looked like they were driving, and Andre just brought so much juice um, on the field to the kids, to the defense, and um, you know, I got to see the tape. I don't know if he was Superman out there, but it just looked like when he came in and we had to go nickel because we had back linebackers hurt. 
um, we played better. But that, that was a real key turning point because when I called for that onside kick, they, and we didn't get it, the defense stopped them. Coach, and we got the ball back and tied it. The defense, mm -hmm. this is the most part of the story, is your great offense. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, yeah, I would. 62-yard uh, runs, 73-yard mm -hmm. runs, 61-yard runs, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we put ourselves uh, put ourselves in the hole early. We fumble the opening kickoff. Um, we get another uh, muff. Mayor's muffs a punt, so we give up two touchdowns uh, through that. But but our defense was was poor today. Uh, they did not. They didn't play well. Uh, we didn't tackle well. Uh, we weren't physical enough. And um, I also want to be careful here, guys, not to take anything away from New Hampshire and. Make sure to give them credit because New Hampshire's year in and year out one of the top offenses in the league. So um, I realize we didn't look very good out there on defense today, but you know, let's also well, give them a lot of credit. Are you, are you, your season progresses and you play teams just as good as New Hampshire, or almost mm -hmm. as good. This has got to concern you. Yeah, wouldn't it you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this, is a, this was a priority going into the season. Mm -hmm. and play your first real game. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, Bob, we'll, we'll keep working at it. Uh, we'll keep trying to get better. Um, well, we'll try to get the guys back this week and get them healed up and see if we can go up to Richmond and uh, play a little bit better. Well, it was missed tackling from the turn 10 yard runs and mm -hmm. longer runs. Yeah, that, that had a lot to do with it. That had a lot to do with it and uh, we, we were out of position. Uh, particularly on a couple of those long runs. See, when, what happens is when you blitz, if you're not gap responsible, um, you're, you're going to get gashed. And that happened to us on, um, on Vallis' touchdown run, the, the one that he went, uh, I think it was the first drive of the second half. There were, there were two blitzes where um, we, we just let the ball out. We weren't gap responsible. And, and we, got, we got to do a better job of that. We got to get better at it. We're, we're playing a lot of new guys, playing a lot of young guys. Um, I'm committed to those young kids. I'm going to stick with those young kids through thick and thin. And if, if that means it's some games like today, that's going to happen. But we're going to get better throughout the season. Uh, we're going to keep playing them. You know, there's you, you guys look at the depth chart. You look at the tackle chart. You know, you'll see there's a lot of true freshmen that are playing a lot of snaps right now. And um, I'm going to stick to it. I'm committed to doing that and playing those. Uh, younger kids and, and getting better and building on defense with with our new philosophy, what we're doing and the kids we're playing. Coach, uh, talk us through the um, Eric Sailor's unsportsmanlike conduct in the fourth mm -hmm. that eventually led to the uh, mm -hmm. tied sixty one. Uh, what was your angle on the play? Mm -hmm. uh, what did you say to the referees? After well, it was it was dumb play by Eric. It was a dumb play. I mean, bottom line, um, kid was stopped. There's no need to push him at the end of the play, and. Uh, you know, he'll be he'll be punished for that. You got to know when to pull off. And uh, you know, Eric plays hard. He's a good football player. You know, I suspended him a week ago um, for not making a good choice. And um, he's out there busting his tail. He's playing hard, but he can't get a penalty in that situation. That hurt us. Well, wasn't that just a little? I mean, would you have thrown a penalty flag? I mean, it didn't look. Would I have thrown a penalty flag, Harry? Absolutely not. I would not, never throw a flag on the Monarchs, but I, to be perfectly honest with you, yeah, if I was the official, I'm throwing it because there's no need to push a kid when three guys are driving him back five yards. At that point, we just got to stop, you know, and, and that's part of what we need to learn right now is that you play for six seconds, and when the whistle blows, you stop. And, you know, I love his aggressiveness. I love his enthusiasm. I love the way he wants to play the game. He wants to play well, but um, he just can't do it. He'd be punished for it. I want to say a remark or two about your quarterback yeah. and the, and the mm -hmm. pass offense today. Did you guys notice him today? Yeah, you know, he says <laughs> the national record. Yeah, just what, what, uh, the what record? FCS record was 624 yards by Jamie Martin of Weber State versus Idaho State on November 23rd, 1991. The FBS record was 716 by David Klinger of Houston versus Arizona State on December 2nd, 1990. Wow. Some rarefied air, huh? Um, <laughs> so what are some words on that? I know you've said yeah. a lot of words in the past. But um, well, I'll just put it in a nutshell, Bob. This, this kid's played 13 football games now. You know, it's what he's doing is uh, it's – it's really unconscionable. I, I have a hard time fathoming what he 
does on the field on a regular basis. And what impresses me the most, Bob, is he was the same kid at 47-24 as he was at 61-61 to 61, uh, when we're driving at the end of the game. And, and all the other kids around him see that. Uh, they see the way he plays. He checked at least three plays today, Bob, that um, you just look at. And I'm on the sideline looking and going, how did he see that? You know, blitzes that he sees. He, he hit Mayers once for 60 yards on a, on a deep slant where he, he saw a blitz coming and checked the play. And um, I've also, Bob, never been around a kid who's played 13 <laughs> plays that has the freedom he has in our offense. I mean, Brian Scott, who um, I think everybody recognizes now, he's a pretty good offensive coordinator, um, lets him check plays. You know, he's allowed to check a play whenever he wants. And uh, that's rare. That's rare. Sometimes guys will get parameters, whether it's red zone or, you know, first down, or you're not allowed to check out of a run. There, there's different parameters I've even had uh, through the years with quarterbacks, and um, he doesn't have any. You know, at 13 plays into his career, he doesn't have parameters on what he can do. And, and what he did today, I, I think, is what he's capable of doing. Um, I, I don't want to say every game, because I, I don't think that's possible every game, but he's capable of doing this. I don't think this is a one-hit wonder. Uh, by Taylor Heineke today. I think he's very capable of this, Bob. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that five offensive linemen played 106 plays today. We didn't sub anybody. And we had one sack against us today. And, and I got to watch the tape, but I think it was a coverage sack. I think Taylor was, he was waiting on something. So a lot of credit to those kids and um, the receiving numbers. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> wow. You need more words? I got a couple of fancy ones if you want. His arm is a couple of days off. Yeah, we've, uh, I was, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. I was talking to the strength coach after. We normally work them out on Sunday, but uh, they're, they're not going to have a workout tomorrow. Pitch They'll have some rest. What's that? Pitch <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We're not going to pull a straw story, <laughs> but no. <laughs> no, we won't sit him, but, uh, but he's going to stay. <laughs> Anybody else seen a game like that before? No, you guys, Dave? Know. Huh? Bob, you see one? <coughs> Harry, your early tech years? You see one of those? Not like this, sir. Well, I'm tired. I need a nap. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. You didn't have much success stopping him. Why? Uh, no, definitely didn't have much success stopping him. Um, we went away from the basics. Missed, we missed a lot of tackles. Like, like the team we were last year, we went back to old hat. We missed tackles. You know, guys try to do too much at times. Guys more focused in that time. You know, miscommunication, things like that. And if we expect to win every week, we can't keep uh, allowing people to put these type of numbers up on us. Because you know, some weeks Taylor Arm might be tired. You know, and he won't be able to hold us up every week. Craig, could you talk about the mentality of the defense going into that last drive, the final drive where you ended up with the pick? Uh, that final drive. Um, we knew we already messed up once. I mean, it shouldn't have came in that drive as a defense, you know. Uh, we knew we had to get it stopped, so we went down package, had brought more DBs in the cover, and we knew, we knew our DBs were going to cover because, I mean, they definitely improved since last year despite what the stats may show today. But um, we just knew we had to get it stopped. They didn't have any timeouts. We knew we had to tackle and keep them in bounds. I mean, guys played it smart. We didn't allow anything deep. You know, little catches in front of us, and uh, Andre Simmons came up with a big play. Funny thing about that is, when I was talking to him on the sideline, I said, one of us is going to make a big play. Because I was at Sam, and he was at Will in our nickel package. So I said, one of us is going to make a big play, and it ended up being him. Taylor, you look a little dinged up. You got some things on you. Absolutely. <coughs> they hit hard. They're aggressive. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really good defense. Yeah, they're really physical. Uh, I credit them, they, they got us tired for sure. And that's, that's the tiredest on our offense we've ever been at the end of the game. For all you guys, how important was this game for this season? I think it was huge. Um, Start the, the lead play with the win. Um, you know, with us not being able to win the CAA, we have to you know, get the playoffs by the top 10. So um, we have to win every game we go into. And um, I, I feel like this would be a huge one. Did you think that uh, offensively, you guys, the pace was kind of wearing those guys down some in the second half? Absolutely. Um, with as many weapons as we have, as long as we keep going fast, it really keeps our defense off pace. You know, they can't sub, 
and it's hard because they're trying to. I hear them out there talking. They're trying to make checks and stuff while we're about to run the play. So it definitely puts a lot of pressure on me. Why did you have? Why do you think you had such a successful day today? Um, Taylor obviously he had to throw me the ball, but uh, <laughs> but um, I wound up switching positions. Instead of playing H, I went out to play outside receiver, and um, normally that outside receiver is single coverage and. You know, I just happened to make some good plays. Taylor gave me the ball in the, in the right position, and I just tried to do what I could do to help my team win. Was it, was it especially sweet redemption after that yeah. hot punt play? Yeah. I mean, what happened there? It, it, was, it wasn't very smart at all, but I, I know the rules of the game. If, if, the, if the offense has touched the ball, if the kicking team touches the ball, no matter what I do with it, it's going to be our ball. And it looked like one of their defenders touched the ball, so. You know, I just went in, but it, it wasn't smart, regardless. It, it wasn't a good play. Taylor, you're down uh, 23 in the third quarter. Uh, talk, just talk about your never see that attitude. What did you say to your offense to get them fueled? I'm going to be set there, just keep keep doing our thing. Um, defense, defense is going to make a play. They're going to give it to another, they're going to do something. And um, you know, we're going to be right back in the game. So I just want to keep doing our thing. And um, you know, the defense did exactly what you know, was going to happen. Um, I just, just keep on the game. I guess it's for anybody. Do you think the, the earlier start time kind of kind of helped you guys uh, this, this Saturday? I know the coach has you in the early morning practice schedule now. You think it really? Uh, the, the earlier 12 o'clock start time kind of like help you uh, more so than to 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock? You guys like that? Well, it didn't help me in the first point as I couldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I dropped it. So it didn't help me. But, you know, we've we all you know been playing football for a long time. The start of the game really doesn't matter. We, we prepared all week and want to go out here and get a win. Hey, Devon, um, why so much trouble today, do you think, um, just slowing down their, their offense? Uh, in the first half, it was a lot of missed tackles, a lot of missed assignments. We really weren't playing old Dominion football. We got, we got a little weight from it in the first half, but started playing more like OD played a little bit in the second half. But we still, we played, aver we didn't, we played below average, but we still got the win. So it's always good to get that. Their scheme seems um, particularly deceptive. I mean, at times, you know, we would, we would <coughs> run it back, have the ball, and there's a quarterback. He fooled us. Did he fool you guys some as well? Um, I wouldn't say it was deceptive. I mean, it's almost like Oregon run. It's, it's just a simple read option. I mean, he's reading it, reading our ends. And you know, at times we're putting on stunts and get and guys like myself a couple of times, I wasn't in the right place because I'll be the quarterback for it. So that definitely hurt us at times, you know. But uh, it, was, it was not much trigger or deception like we thought we would, but they're definitely a well coached team and they, and they ran their offense well. More questions for the student athletes? Okay, thanks, guys.